okay, now we're going to start designing um, controllers for a control system using Bodhi to guide to guide us in that design process. Um, we're going to limit ourselves just like we did in interpreting Bodhi plots to Unity feedback configurations. Uh, and before we didn't have this controller there, we just had a forward path transfer function. And from there we interpreted the Bodhi plot of this forward path transfer function. We, we made deductions about the closed loop system. Now we're gonna put in this controller and try to come up with good designs of this controller so that we get closed loop system behavior that meets some performance specs. This, the process or the plant is a given. What we control is the form of this controller and its parameters. Um, if we put this controller in here, the whole forward path transfer function is the product of these two guys. So this product becomes the new forward path transfer function. In, and this guy, in effect, will be a combination of a constant gain and additional breakpoints to the Bode plot. If we add a zero or a pole to this guy, we're adding a zero or a pole to the closed loop or to the uh, forward path transfer function. So we know how that kind of affects the behavior. But we know how that would affect the Bode plot. You know, we'd start with the Bode plot of just this guy. But then whatever we do here adds to that Bode plot. You know, we're gonna add breakpoints, add gains, add phase margin, et cetera. Um, so the product becomes our new forward path transfer function. So let's see. First, let's look through a few different options. Um, this Bode plot would be just the Bode plot of the plant. For this example, we'll say this is the plant. Uh, that is this guy here. So there he is. Um, if, if all we're gonna do is proportional control, that controller is just a constant, we'll call it K. <clears throat> if K is greater than one, remember we move the reference line down. And if K is less than one, we move the reference line up. Reference line being the new zero dB line. But this is as it's given to us, if K equals one. With no mods, we're just setting that gain to one. Uh, let's see, this is the 10 to the zero line. Where does this initial asymptote cross it? at about right at zero dB. That means, well, first, the phase is minus 90, this slope is minus 20 dB per decade, which means it's a type one system, which means this point here, zero dB line, is our K sub V, our, our air con steady state error constant, which means one is one. One over one is the steady state error. So the steady state error is a full one, 100%. Um, this gain crosses, looks like it crosses the zero dB line at about 0.8, a little bit less than, there's 0.9, there's 0.8. Double that for the bandwidth, the bandwidth is about 1.6. What's the, well, let's, let's look. Let's say, we had a spec of, we want a, a steady state error of 10%, less than 10%. That would mean we want a error constant of 10. In dB, that's 20. We need to increase it. So we lower this reference line. This is now our new zero dB line. And now what happens? Um, Well, our, our case of V is now 10. 
20 dB above it. This is the new, the reference line is the new zero dB. So that 20 dB above it is this line here. And that's 20 dB or 10. That gives us our steady state here of 10%. Uh, let's see, where does it cross that reference line? Out here at about somewhere around three, three radians per second, which means the new bandwidth is about six radians per second. We're looking at what happens if we just try proportional gain. All we do is change that k from a one to something else. In this case, we change it to 10 to meet a air expect, steady state air expect. What happened to phase margin? Here's what it used to be. Now we're looking for where does the gain cross the zero dB gain? Go down there and that was about, this gap was about, we're looking for the gap above minus 180. It was about 50 degrees. Now, if we change the gain to meet our steady state error spec, we're out over here. The phase margin is now only about 20 degrees. So we reduced our phase margin, which might affect other performance. Uh, so in some cases, just simple proportional controls, just changing that gain constant might not be enough to meet all specs. Like, okay, in this case, we met the steady state air spec, but we might have not met some other spec. So another possibility is not only a gain in there, but at a zero, this would be a proportional because of the A and differential control at a zero. Well, this would be what we add to the forward path podium. We would be adding 90 degrees of phase at wherever, centered at wherever we put that uh, zero. And we'd be adding 20 dB per decade in slope. This is kind of bad because it goes up forever which means we'd be letting in more high frequency noise than maybe we want to. The other thing is, this is an ideal controller. It's not physically realizable really, at least by passive elements. So we're not gonna deal with this guy anymore. In fact, what we're gonna do is this guy called lead controller. We're gonna add a zero and a pull and this P is going to be greater than the Z. That makes it lead control. Uh, it advances the fit. Here's the Bode plot of what that adds to the forward path Bode plot. We'll add some gain, but only some fixed amount. So it doesn't keep going up forever. And you add some phase, kind of right wherever you want it by proper placement of the Z and the P. Um, and we'll use this. This will be the only controller I'll consider in my course. So we're gonna do lead control and it has multiple steps to it. And we'll save all those steps and exactly how to do this for another video.